Hello everybody and welcome to my Oshino Code chapter number 111 review. This chapter is titled, Mammon, Worship, and Passion. Now, last time in Oshino Ko, we got a chapter focusing on I and director Guntonda's relationship whenever the first movie of Little Aqua was being made all of those chapters ago. And we also get some insight from when Aqua went and talked with producer Kabu Kaburagi to um, say, hey, here's the script of The 15 Year Lie. I helped write this. I know this is factual. So we are going to make a movie out of this. And we see Aqua at the end going to his mother's grave and saying, hey, I'll make your real wish come true. And we start off chapter 111. And we this chapter is all about what it takes to make a movie. It is about the production costs, the acting, and everything in between that as you saw from the title of this episode it has something to do with the amount of money because yeah it i'll explain it all here but it's a bunch of things going on here right so we start off with a bunch of narration just saying japanese japan's film market is the third largest in the world after china and the united states they have a market of roughly 200 billion and it says about 2 billion USD, being that that is 200 million yen, of course, right? And it says nearly 500 films a year comp compete for box office re revenue in 3,600 screens in Japan. A filmmaker like me has to take a few steps in order to get the movie onto the screens. As we see that this is director Gontonda sort of doing a narration here, right? And... We see that this chapter is really broken down into a bunch of these steps. And we see step one is getting help from a movie producer. As we see um, producer Kaburagi here, and he's just like, well, it's time to make money. I made the proposal. You just tell them your thoughts on the work, as usual, right? And director Gontanda is there, and he's like, wow, it's a huge conference room, huh? Step two is giving a presentation to film distributors and we get more narration from Gontona just saying the number of screens that can be used changes depending on the power of the distribution company if the number of screens is different the number of mobilizations will also be different if you want to make a big movie for high production value you may want to go through a stronger distribution but naturally naturally it's not easy to get a green light from strong distributors as we see the directors here sitting with Kaburagi, and he's just like, damn it, we can't get any of the big ones. Kaburagi says, that's because the content is very sensitive. Big companies just don't like it. But, well, some distributors kind of like this dangerous work. So let's be patient. Don't worry. We will get a bite before too long. Um, Goton does narration continues it just says kaburagi is a freelance producer who's not affiliated with any distribution company therefore he needs to bring a plan for distribution however it is possible for him to round rob in each company so there's a big advantage to that too as we sort of see just like distributor company a company b company c company d and just an arrow going to each one and then just getting rejected and going back and going back and going back just this big cycle right and we also get some more narration. It's just saying, this kind of man is reliable when you want to put your work out to the world. And Kaburagi's like, the next one is most likely a winner. As we go to the distributor of Akioko L LTD, right? And Kaburagi's on the phone and he's talking, right? And he's like, yeah, I was able to enter agreement with Akio. But the conditions are rather harsh. You're willing to pay for advertising expenses and such, but we need to come up with the actual production expenses, which means we need to prepare at least 100 million yen for ourselves, which is about $1 million. The director's like, we have to get the money, huh? Um, and Kaburagi says, well, it's our chance to show what we can do. Step three is gathering investors. You need a lot of money to make movies, and one movie alone may cost about two to three hundred million, which of course again is two to three million USD. These production costs are funded by several companies. They'll share rights and profits according to investment, the so-called 
production committee as we sort of see a big arrow sort of going through everything right we see the sponsor um advertising fee advertising agency the advertising fee the tv station broadcasting rights three production committee production costs and it's just a big sort of flow chart just showing how all of the money and the production system sort of flows narration continues saying to sum it up it's a form of gambling but the profit margin is not that high if a company that has nothing to do for the rights of movies invests in a movie, the president of that company must love movies and will be willing to support them. As we go to a stock company called Architecture Gr Dream, where its head is pretty much saying, Have you watched director Kota Sanga's lyrics? Japan should do more movies like that. Kaburagi is like, yeah, you're absolutely right. We also cut around to a bunch of different companies now. We see Chinamina Traffic LTD. Um, the heroine should be played by Frill Sharani. I've been a fan of her lately. She's the star of the movie. I'll give you the best of my full amount. We cut over to Mizutaki Tours Co. LTD. If I think about leads and local contributions, can you film the movie around here? We also go to another stock company, which is Tech Plans where we go and they say do you really think you can secure monetization with this project what about the recoup performed by the production committee and we also go by strawberry productions lt strawberry just strawberry productions oh my gosh um this is of course where aqua and ruby and all of them are at and she's just like oh um well and at this point we are done moving around as the director's just going like, whatever we do, it always ends with money, 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 money. Uh, geez, I'm so sick of it. Kaburagi's like, <laughs> would you rather do it yourself? And director's like, no, that's not it. But Kaburagi continues, hey, if you have a smartphone, you can make as many videos as you want. In this area, you can just upload your stuff on the internet for people to watch. Hey, everybody watching, thank you for watching. Um, he continues on, what's the reason for sticking to the theater? And the director's like, isn't it obvious? Without theaters, you can't aim for the heart of the movement. The only thing that can cause a movement called social phenomenon is work that involves huge amounts of money. People are desperate to spread information because it's how money goes around. It's not the internet where you can get everything for free. And uh, Kaburagi is just like, social pheno phenomenon, huh? Do you think that director Gantanda? I didn't think that director Gantanda had such big ambitions. And director's just like, that's what every creator thinks. We want to be appreciated by so many people for a long time. We want to make something that'll be appreciated a century later. And this, in my opinion, is a really good message. Because for me, in making these videos, right, this isn't like a movie production, and I'm, I can be honest, my production isn't great. My schedule's not always the best, even though I'm trying to get better on that. And, like, this episode you're watching, for instance, I can always tell you it's on me. It's going to be my stock background, my good old Ikea board, which I just love to death. It's going to be two of the most recent recent Oshinoko volumes, one in Japanese, one in English. Probably the first volume in English, and the most recent one of Aqua in Japanese. And then just some text in the center, just talking about the chapter. And that's really it, but... I also have ambitions and dreams of mine, like I want to do a Woodstocking documentary in the future, and that is something that I want to be able to hold on to and have people enjoy in a long period of time. I just don't want something that'll take no time at all and just be there flat. I want something with life to it, and that is something that I think every creator who has ever created something truly strives for. But Kaburagi continues, and he's like, creators, huh? I'm not interested in people sitting under a high horse and saying, it's an old work, but it's amazing a few hundred years from now. In the end, money and ratings only come after theatrical releases. Future critics can't give us money. Well, anything, loss is fine as long as it makes money. And the director's just like, you mammonist. And he's just like, come on now, this isn't our only job. As we see, number four is casting. As we see all of the eye candidates, the culprit, as we just run through a bunch of names here, right? So the eye candidates are Akane, um, Frill, Shurani, um, Nanami Saito, Kogone Fujioka, Emily Mura, 
and Mihao Seo. And we know a few of these characters, like, of course, you know Akane. Akane's Miss Krill. We saw I had to refer to Aqua, but besides the point. But we all see beside this is, like, available in May, negotiating with your agent, confirming her a bit availability. And we just go down to the culprit where it's Aqua Hoshino confirmed, which I just find really, really funny. And we also see, like, the president of the agency candidates as we see that Mel is available. So hopefully Mel can be a big character in the series. Again, I'm getting really happy about this because Mel has some really good character development in the 2D stage play arc. Or 2.5D stage play arc. It was really good development he had. Um, but we continue with some text as um, it's like, The profit will change by hundreds of millions depending on the box office star. Our success, our failure is determined by our own choices. However, it's not easy for popular actors to keep up their schedules. So they, if they don't like the script, they won't hesitate to turn down the offer. At times like this, laying a groundwork on a daily basis will finally come in handy. As, of course, we know that Kaburagi has worked with almost all of these characters in the past, and he has connections, and these connections lead him to being able to like put these people in because he helped them out in the past. Right? It's that given sort of take there. He continues, among the candidates I've worked with and taken care of in the past, there are those who are famous on standing on the front line. I did something for them, so they should return a favor for me at a time like this. It's the culmination of my work. And, um, what's his face? Director, he's just like, you can do that because you like to do things like live extensively. And uh, Kaburagi just says, huh, well some of them will definitely return a favor. As we definitely see um, a bunch of faces in the background. And we sort of get what Gotanda thinks about Kaburagi. He's like, he maintains connections with actors and investors. He has knowledge of video production and cares about leads and the entire crew. It's not easy and easygoing to pull all of that off at the same time. Without people like him, filmmaking wouldn't be possible. He only talks about money when he opens his mouth. But without passion... He could never do this job. And again, I have to think back to when Kaburagi here was introduced in the oh sweet today sort of live action thing, right? At first, I was really scared that he was going to be a really bad character and like a really sort of messed up one as we've seen in these acting series before. Sort of thinking about a series like Act Age and how that ended up going. But I'm happy that this sort of character is sort of getting, like, a passion and more of a look-through as we keep going through the series. But to wrap up this chapter, Kaburagi says, Director Gontonga, I'm really looking forward to a movie that can cause a social phenomenon. If that happens, I'll make a lot of money, too. As Director Gontonga is just like, hmm, you mammonist. As we look at a computer and a bunch of, like, bottles beside and a bunch of crumpled up pieces of paper and the script of the 15 year lie written by Taishi Gotanda and Aqua Hishino sitting in front of the computer so that's the end of the chapter here this chapter is definitely a good one for explaining the plot right we don't have really anything here with Aqua Ruby or any of our sort of main characters but this is really a chapter focusing on the director and Kaburagi's relationship in making this movie. A director and a producer just coming together to create this. And it's really interesting to see that how Kaburagi has this idea of he wants money, but he also has this burning passion that you can't make movies without. And without further ado, if you enjoyed this, um, hopefully tomorrow we'll have the... Oshinoko review for chapter 112 up. And without further ado, this is going to be Glow Plasma 231 out.